I have a friend who gets up at six o'clock every morning, goes for a five kilometer run, eats a breakfast of porridge and fresh fruit, and arrives into work feeling refreshed, relaxed, and ready to go. I totally hate him. Because if you're anything like me, you view the snooze button as a human right. And no matter how early you go to bed in the evening, you can't quite seem to shake this morning sensation of feeling like you're thinking through cotton wool. But being tired might not actually be our fault because there's a delicate balance going on within our bodies that's not always quite in line with the way that we live our lives. The biological clock that controls our sleep is called the circadian cycle. And it's controlled by a release of hormones from a little pea-sized gland called the pineal, which is just above the middle of your brain. Now this gland releases something called melatonin, which starts to kick in around nine o'clock in the evening, just as you start to wind down and sleep becomes a bit more inviting. And then melatonin will remain high in your body for about 12 hours while you're sleeping, um, and then gradually reduce in the morning so that it's barely detectable in the middle of the day. This natural hormonal cycle of low in the day and high in the evening is also what causes your alertness, which should be the opposite, so high in the day and low in the evening. But your melatonin levels also act as a natural alarm clock, which is what really messes you up when you travel through time zones and get jet lag. If your melatonin levels are low when it's time to go to bed, it doesn't matter how tired you feel, you're gonna find it impossible to go to sleep. The circadian cycle also explains why it's hard to get a full eight hours sleep if you pull an all-nighter. So your melatonin levels might be quite high when you finally go to bed at five or six o'clock in the morning, but your natural cycle is gonna be there to screw you over around lunchtime, robbing you of your well-earned kit. It also explains why sometimes you can get a second wind if you stay up past 24 hours, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend that as a healthy way to live. Back to my annoying and totally overachieving friend though. These circadian cycles are different in different people, with some people shifted much more to the left and others, i.e. mine, shifted much more to the right. Now there are some arguments to suggest that there's an evolutionary advantage to have some people as owls and some people as larks, um, the idea being that a settlement would never go unguarded. But what we do know though, is that adolescent circadian cycles are much, much later in the day than for adults, which is why if you tell a teenager to go to bed at 10 o'clock in the evening, they're gonna lie there staring at the ceiling until two o'clock in the morning and then feel like death warmed up when the alarm clock goes off. Their circadian cycles are out of sync with their sleep cycles, which is why it's really not your fault if you have symptoms of narcolepsy in your early morning lessons. But there is another problem that can affect our natural rhythms and it looks like your smartphone is to blame. Because our circadian cycles and our melatonin levels are actually dictated by the amount of light around us. Now this made sense as we evolved, we'd be alert and awake during the daytime and much sleepier at nighttime when it was dark. But now we spend our daytimes in dimly lit rooms and our evenings sitting under brightly lit artificial bulbs looking at TV screens and computer screens and smartphones. And sadly, to make white light, all of our favorite devices emit light at a really short wavelength known as blue light. And that's almost exactly the right level that our brains are looking for to say it's the middle of the day now and we need you to be as alert as possible so we're going to suppress your melatonin levels. And as we've seen with jet lag and teenagers, if your melatonin levels aren't right, you ain't getting any sleep. There are a few things that you can do for this. So uh, there's an app that you can download for your smartphone uh, that changes the colour of your screen depending on the time of day. So much warmer in the evening and brighter during the day. Or you could use amber goggles uh, that block out all of the blue light and you can wear them after the sun goes down. Now these have been shown to improve your sleep, but they do make you look like a bit of a tool. But the best piece of advice is to avoid any screens whatsoever for about an hour before you go to bed and just generally listen to your internal body clock. You might not be born to be an early riser, but there's really nothing you can do about it.